This video will show you how to assemble the Rad Rover 6 Plus and Rad Rover 6 Plus Step Through. We will be using a Rad Rover 6 Plus Step Through, but the assembly process will be the same for the Rad Rover 6 Plus. Start by photographing all four sides of the box and the label with the serial numbers. Make sure the label is easy to read and keep the photos for your records. Open the bike box and have a friend help you carefully lift the bike out of the box. Rest it on the rear wheel and fork protector plate and ensure the bike is stable. Take photos of the packaged bike and keep the photos for your records. This can be helpful if you want to package and ship your bike in the future. Remove the small box from the bottom of the bike box. This contains the owner's manual, charger, headlight, fender mounting hardware, pedals, a set of keys, and the assembly toolkit. The assembly toolkit contains a variety of tools to help with assembly. You will use many, but not all, of these tools to assemble the bike. We also recommend using a pair of flat side cutters, a 15 millimeter pedal wrench, a bike pump with a Schrader valve and pressure gauge, a torque wrench with a set of Allen bits, bicycle grease, and a friend to help with assembly. As you unpack and assemble the bike, make sure to read the information on the tags attached to your bike. These tags contain important information to help keep you safe while using the bike. During assembly, be careful not to touch the brake rotor on the front and rear wheels, as that can deposit oils on the rotor. Start by snipping the zip ties to remove the front wheel. Remove the packaging and set the wheel aside. Remove the rest of the packaging from everything except the handlebar and the display connector for now, and set the front fender aside. Recycle the packaging material and bike box according to local rules, or keep it in case you want to ship your bike in the future. Start by installing the handlebar. Locate the bag with the handlebar stem faceplate and hardware. Make sure each bolt has a split washer and set the bolts and the faceplate aside nearby. Remove the packaging from the handlebar and leave the display connector tag on for now. Orient the handlebar so the brake levers face forward and the shifter is on the rider's right side. Trace the brake cable from the left brake lever to the brake caliper and make sure the bundle of cables is not twisted. Place the handlebar into position as shown, centered on the stem. Place the handlebar stem faceplate in place and thread the four bolts by hand. Use a 5mm Allen wrench to tighten the four bolts evenly and in an X pattern. Make sure the gap between all four sides of the stem plate is even. Then, torque the bolts to 10 newton meters. Then, torque both handlebar stem clamp bolts to 15 newton meters. Next, install the front wheel. Start by locating the quick release skewer, open the lever and remove the thumb nut and cone spring on the opposite side. Pull out the skewer, keeping the washer and the other cone spring in place. Pass the skewer through the brake rotor side of the wheel and slide the cone spring, starting with the narrow side, onto the skewer. Both cone springs should point in toward the wheel hub. Keep the lever open and thread on the thumb nut a couple of turns, leaving enough room for the fork dropouts. Remove the hydraulic brake spacer from between the brake pads on the front wheel. Make sure you don't squeeze the brake levers. Carefully lift the front of the bike and lower the fork onto the wheel so the brake rotor enters the brake caliper and the axle rests on the fork dropouts fully. Check that the wheel is fully seated in the dropouts, that the wheel axle is level and parallel to the ground, and that the wheel is centered. Then, hold the quick release lever in line with the axle 
and tighten the thumb nut until the lever can stay parallel to the floor without being held. Use the palm of your hand to close the lever fully without touching the brake rotor. There should be enough resistance that the lever leaves an imprint on your hand. The quick release lever secures the front wheel to the bike, so it's important that the thumb nut is tight enough so the closed lever has adequate clamping force and keeps the axle and wheel firmly in place. If the lever is easy to close, open the lever and tighten the thumb nut a bit more, then close the lever. Prop the bike on the kickstand. Visually inspect the bash guard to ensure it is parallel with the rear wheel as shown. If it needs to be adjusted, first ensure that both of the bash guard bolts are torqued to six newton meters. If the bash guard still needs adjusting, gently grasp the bottom of the bash guard and pull it away from the bike until it is correctly positioned. The bash guard is designed to be slightly flexible in order to absorb impacts and protect the derailleur. Rotate the right crank toward the back of the bike to check the chain alignment. Make sure the chain runs through the drivetrain smoothly. If the chain skips or jumps, the drivetrain may need to be aligned before your first ride. Get help from a local bike shop or contact us for help. Next, install the headlight and front fender. Use a five millimeter Allen wrench to remove the hardware from the fork. Pass the fender back from the front of the wheel under the fork arch. Pass the P-clamps between the spokes and the forks. Pass the bolt through a washer, through the headlight bracket, the fender mounting point, and the fork. Pass another washer onto the bolt and thread on the lock nut by hand. Use a 5mm Allen wrench and 10mm wrench to tighten the bolt part way. To plug in the headlight connector, locate the connector ends, align the internal notch and pins and external arrows and press directly together without twisting. To secure the fender arms to the bike, start by holding the fender clamp bolt backing nut in position and use a five millimeter Allen wrench to remove the fender clamp bolt. Without touching the brake rotor, wrap the clamp around the fork making sure the fender arm runs on the outside of the brake cable. Reinstall the bolt and tighten it, leaving a small, even gap on both sides of the clamp. Repeat on the other side of the bike. Check that the fender and headlights are centered and clear of moving parts. Then torque all bolts to six Newton meters. Tilt the headlight slightly downward so it won't blind oncoming traffic when turned on. If the headlight is tight, use an 8mm wrench and 3mm Allen wrench to loosen the angle adjustment bolt. Then, angle the headlight downward and tighten the bolt securely. Do not over tighten. Install the rear fender using the fender mounting bolts from their bag. Take one of the bolts with a washer, pass it through the eyelet on one of the fender mounting arms, and then thread the bolt into the middle mounting point near the rear dropout. Do not mount the fender onto the rectangular tab that sticks up from the seat stay. That mounting point is for the optional rear rack. Repeat on the other side of the bike. Torque both bolts to six Newton meters. Let's install the pedals. Locate the pedals and identify which is the right and left pedal by the sticker on the pedal. Apply grease to the threaded portion of each axle. The right pedal threads onto the rider's right side. Carefully thread in the pedal by hand, turning clockwise toward the front of the bike. The left pedal threads onto the rider's left side. Carefully thread in the pedal by hand, turning counterclockwise also toward the front of the bike. Once each pedal is fully threaded onto the proper crank, use a 15 millimeter pedal wrench to torque each pedal to 35 Newton meters. Tightening more or less than 35 Newton meters or cross threading the pedals can cause permanent damage to parts or cause the pedal to fall off, which may require a full crank and pedal replacement. Next, we'll inflate the tires. 
Check the tire bead on each tire to make sure it is evenly seated around the rim. Then, inflate the tires to the tire pressure listed on the tire sidewall. Now that the bike is assembled, we'll adjust the seat for comfort and safety. Open the quick release lever and remove the seat post. Center the seat post clamp over the notch on the seat tube. This clamp keeps your seat post secure when closed. To start, keep the lever open and twist the thumb nut toward the front of the bike. This will increase the amount of pressure it takes to close the lever, which will keep your seat post in place. On the seat post, find the minimum insertion marking. This marking should never be visible once the seat is adjusted to your desired height. Insert the seat post into the seat tube and adjust it up or down to a comfortable height. Make sure the minimum insertion marking isn't visible. Close the lever to secure the seat post in place. This should require enough pressure that leaves an imprint on your hand. If the lever is too tight to close, open the lever again, twist the thumb nut one quarter turn toward the back of the bike and close the lever. Repeat this until closing the lever requires enough pressure to leave an imprint on your hand. Check that the seat post doesn't move. If you need to adjust the seat forward, backward, or change the seat's angle, use a six millimeter Allen wrench to loosen the seat adjustment bolt. Adjust the seat, making sure to stay within the limit markings on the seat rails. Then torque the bolt to 15 Newton meters. Next, perform a handlebar twist test to check if the handlebar stem moves out of alignment with the front wheel when you push and pull on the handlebar. Stand at the front of the bike and brace the front wheel between your feet and lower legs. Hold both handlebar grips and push forward with one hand while pulling back with the other hand. Push and pull with about 20 pounds of force with each hand. Then, switch hands so the opposite hands are pushing and pulling with about 20 pounds of force. Make sure the handlebar and front wheel are still properly aligned. If the stem twists out of alignment, use a 5mm Allen wrench to loosen the stem clamp bolts evenly, a half turn at a time, alternating between bolts until you can remove them. Align the stem so the handlebar is perpendicular to the front wheel, as shown. Reinstall the stem clamp bolts and tighten partway until the bolts touch the other side of the clamp and you feel some resistance. Then, use a torque wrench to tighten the bolts evenly, one quarter turn at a time, and alternating between bolts until both bolts are torqued evenly to 15 Newton meters. Once the torque wrench indicates that both bolts are properly secured, check that each bolt is properly secured two more times. Start at the top bolt, torque to 15 Newton meters, then switch to the bottom bolt and torque to 15 Newton meters. Repeat once more to verify the torque of each bolt. Perform a twist test again. If the handlebar and stem can still rotate out of alignment with the front wheel, contact us for more help. If there was no movement in the stem, the bolts have been properly torqued. With the stem secure, it's time to adjust the angle of the display and remote to reduce glare. To do this, loosen the bolts on the display just until it can rotate. Then, adjust the angle slightly away from the rider and tighten the bolts to 3 Newton meters. Repeat this to adjust the remote. Then. Adjust the angle of the brake levers. Use a 5mm Allen wrench to loosen the brake lever clamp bolt. Adjust the angle of the brake lever so it's comfortable for the rider. Tighten the bolt to 6 Newton meters. You can also adjust how close the brake levers are to the handlebar grips. To do this, turn the knob toward the rider to move the lever closer or rotate it away to move the lever farther away. Remove the tag on the display connector and locate the other matching green connector end. Plugging in the display connector will turn on the bike. Line up the internal notch and pins and external arrows and press together without twisting. Check that all other connectors on the bike are connected. If your bike comes with the display connector already connected, but your bike doesn't turn on, your battery is probably in ship mode. To take it out of ship mode, press and hold the battery button 
for at least three seconds. Once ship mode is off, the lights on the battery will blink. Find the bell on the left side of the handlebar. Test it and use it to notify others when you approach and pass them while riding. Before riding, check that all hardware on the bike is torqued to the values listed in the owner's manual. Squeeze the brake levers to ensure there is pressure in the hydraulic lines. Work through the safety checklists in the owner's manual and test the bike fully before riding. Refer to the owner's manual for important details related to safety, maintenance, and bike adjustments. Read it fully and keep it for future reference. You can always download the most recent version from radpowerbikes.com forward slash manual. To make sure your bike is ready for any adventure, plan to get a tune-up from a local, certified, and reputable bike mechanic after the first 50 to 100 miles of riding. After that, keep up with regular maintenance, which will likely be less frequent depending on how and where you ride. Reach out to our product support team if you have any questions and ride rad.